His achievements on the Boise State track have led him to success on the Olympic stage. Team USA bobsledder Nick Cunningham is preparing to qualify for his third Olympic Games. And before he competes in this weekend's World Cup race, he's kind enough to join us from historic Olympic City, Lake Placid, New York. Nick, thanks so much for taking some time. Now, you ran track for Boise State for three seasons, and in your time as a Bronco, you were voted team captain and led your squad to a conference championship in 2006. How did being a Bronco guide you to where you are today, being able to represent your country on an international scale? It's, it's, uh... It's been a lot of fun to kind of use what I learned at Boise State and what I learned as uh, as being a team member uh, in that organization and kind of using that to propel me to the world stage. And it's been such a, a great experience. Um, I have people I hear yelling, go Broncos, that don't even, never even step foot in Idaho. So it's, uh, we know we have a lot of college pride in here. So it is a post-collegiate sport, bobsled is. So a lot of us have gone to college and then came and found bobsled afterwards. So, so for us to kind of, use that pride it's, it's a lot of fun around here yeah and on that note you're not the first track star turned bobsledder what is it that makes athletes make this transition and what even made you try bobsledding um so so it is a post-collegiate sport for all of us we are our call collegiate careers have ended and we we aren't really ready to give it up you know maybe we just aren't at the at the level where we make a, a summer olympics or a, if you're a football player you know, maybe you make the combine, maybe you're kind of on travel uh, practice squads here and there. But a lot of us kind of still have that that need to compete and that, that urge to compete. And that's what's so cool about the sport is in the U.S. you can try out for something so new and still be an Olympic hopeful even after your, your collegiate career has, has ended. You don't need to start the sport when you're five years old like, like a lot of the other ones. So, so it's a speed power that's kind of what we look for and that's why track and field and football kind of play a big role in it yeah and speaking of speed bobsledding isn't necessarily for the faint of heart speeds can top 90 miles per hour while you're winding down a pretty unforgiving ice tunnel what makes this sport so risky and do you get nervous anymore um you know it's, it's not so much of a nervous factor for us it's more of a respect factor the day that you don't respect what you're doing is a day that you will end up crashing and probably hurting someone um just like any form of racing crashing is it's a part of the sport it happens uh no matter what level you're at some of the best pilots in the world still crash uh, at, during races during training uh, that's just us pushing the limits and to be successful on the stage, you do have to push those limits. So, so that's what kind of makes the danger side of it go. But it is, I mean, we're going anywhere between 75 and 95 miles per hour, uh, five Gs of force. There's no padding. All we're wearing are helmets. Uh, there's no seat belts or anything. And, and so it is a, there's a lot of choreography that goes into us practicing and, and learning the tracks and, and going down. Yeah, well, all that practice has paid off. You've won quite a few gold medals in the North American Cup, which you're competing in again this weekend to hopefully get some more Olympic qualification points. But what would it mean to you to finally be able to get gold in your third go around? Um, it's, I mean, everyone in the whole world right now is going for that gold medal. That's, that's what we want. And so for me, it'll just kind of be a, a, a really good, cherry on top of, of a great kind of athletic career. Um, I'm not sure if this will be it for me, so I'm going at this thing with everything that I have, like I have all the other ones. However, the difference between this one is I'm now the only one on the team that has Olympic driving experience. So I do have that kind of ace in the hole. I have that that kind of up my sleeve that I can kind of dip into and, and know what to expect, know how to manage a team at the Olympics, know how to, what the distractions will be so I feel that I'm going in a little bit better prepared than maybe some of, of the other guys. And you're proudly wearing it on your jacket now, but what does it mean to you to be able to represent the United States on an international scale and just how special of a feeling is that? It's a, it's a feeling that, that you will never be able to, to really kind of talk about. It's, it's a feeling that has so much pride and so much blood, sweat, and tears put behind it. This this little patch on my chest that has the, the five Olympic rings on it means so much to me. It means 
everything that that the Olympic Games are about to everything that my parents have sacrificed to get me to this level to just kind of being able to give this back to every parent, teacher, coach, everyone that's ever believed in me. This is all for us. It's 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 cool because I get to wear the jacket, but it's it's really a symbol for for everyone that's ever put any time into me and told me, hey, if you want this bad enough, go get it. You can do this. So so it's it's a cool feeling to be able to wear it and give it back to the community. That is awesome. Well, Nick, thank you so much for taking the time. Good luck in this weekend's qualifiers, and fingers crossed, good luck in Pyeongchang. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Once again, that was Team USA bobsledder and Boise State alum Nick Cunningham. This feature has been brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, the official credit union of the Mountain West. From the Mountain West Network studio, I'm Cassie Soto.